Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And today I'm presenting a video that a lot of people have asked me for. Actually, this is one half of what they've asked me for. I've had a significant um, number of messages, comments, DMs of people asking me to either mod the Fucker IK65 or and or to show them how to do the VIA uh, because this keyboard comes preloaded with closed source software, uh, Fecker's normal closed source option, but it does have a sounds much better than stock, though I think that with a little bit more time I could uh, do more to it. But first, I wanted to take a look at the software process, so we went ahead um, to show very quick uh, screenshots of how the closed source software works. But once you've decided that you want to go with Vaya, and I'm going to have links to all the files down below in the comment section, but if I miss one, please let me know. Um, you download the files and you basically you need, if you're just going to go with Vaya, you need the Vaya to, or the firmware Vaya upgrade file, as well as the Fecker IK65 JSON file. Um, and I also explain not only how to do the firmware update, but also how to go to usevia.app on your web browser and select settings, select your design tab to view, and then go and select version two deprecated to then load your uh, JSON file. And then once you load it, it's gonna ask you to pair the device again. At that point, you will have your VIA screen. Now, being that this is not a V3, definition file yet we may see it we may not although it really wouldn't take that much to to modify it to make one top right now you will see three buttons or three keys in place of where you would see the knob so basically the one on the left hand side is what happens if you turn left the middle one is what happens if you press and the right one is what happens if you turn right. So you, these can be programmed, um, not in the proprietary closed source software, but in VIA, they are programmable. And it has a limited amount of um, RGB customization, no per key, though I have yet to see the QMK source. And I, I'm gonna assume that if the QMK source is out there, there's probably a way to set up per key RGB because I think based on the chips that I saw on this, um, that it should be capable of handling per key RGB. Now, I always, before going nuts, I, I like to take a Q-tip, dip a little bit of uh, the non-acetone on there, and just try for a little corner. If you intend to remove the logo, please, it must be non-acetone nail polish remover. If you use acetone, you're gonna have a bad day. It's going to warp the case and make it possibly unsealable or unclosable. Now, another way you can do this, though I don't recommend it, is by using the magic erasers, the Mr. Clean soft erasers, but they actually remove any surface that you touch. So they will remove some of the underlying plastic, uh, making for a different finished texture um, where the logo used to be, whereas the uh, non-acetone nail polish remover uh, makes a nice clean removal easy. The Fecker logo on this keyboard is particularly present, I should say. It's just kind of in your face, so removing it, I think, makes a big difference into making this look a lot cleaner. Um, went ahead and removed the, uh, the plate PCB foam as well as the under PCB and the case uh, EVA foam. All I really left on there was the IPX E sheet um, before I loaded up the Yako Palm Browns. Uh, for th the reason I do this on certain cases when there's more of a cavity, I find that basically uh, putting the tape mod on the back of the PCB, and I like to do the three layers, and then filling with polyfill seems to make for a deeper tone. Now you will notice, uh, I'm going to include a link to my original review video in here and the sound test that I did. In that sound test, you can see the microphone in the video because I was basically just placing it about two inches above the keyboard. I have now moved it to eight inches from the keyboard, so the sound tests are not really the same in as far as uh, reproducing the sound. Um, 
Honestly, I prefer the way that it sounds now. Others may disagree. I should have re redone the video prior to me doing the mods with my new setup, but I am actually in the process today, hopefully, if I have the time, I'm gonna be upgrading to my new microphone, uh, Shure uh, XLR7V, um, and that should make a huge difference when it comes to not only the sound of my voice while I'm talking, but also uh, the sound test that we'll be doing. So anyway, I did the three layers of Tempest tape mod, uh, making sure to cut out for the JST connector each time. And even on this cheaper board, the JST connector is much better than it was on either the R1 or the R2 c V65, which is just, it's so sad because I really wanted to like that key. So after applying the, um, the Tempest tape mod in three layers, I added some polyfill to the bottom and that was basically it. Besides removing the, fo the foams that come in there, I went ahead, like I said, loaded it up with the Akko um, Palm Browns and, and the GMYK, um, SA, double shot ABS uh, coffee keycap set, as well as the new silver knob, which I was hoping for a brown or a gold that I think would have worked much better, but the ones that I have, they don't have a long enough collar and I prefer functionality. Uh, although looks are important as well. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that this helps. And as far as with the, the Via and everything, I am going to do a, a split video with just the Via part of it, just in case that's all you were looking for. Uh, so it just shows you the simple steps to take to get Via on this keyboard. And like I said, I, despite me wanting or preferring the GMK67 over the IK65, I still say that now that it's modded, I like how it sounds. I like how it feels. It's got a little bit more bounce because I got rid of the, the foams on the underneath. I think it has a, a nice quiet thock with a little bit of pop, not quite marbly, but I like the sound profile uh, much better. I just, I'm kicking myself in the head that I didn't do a stock sound test now that I have placed the microphone at a greater distance. That way it doesn't sound overtly deep. I think this one comes out a little bit more natural um, and, and I like how it sounds. I enjoy it. I enjoy the SA keycaps on it. I, I enjoy typing on it. So. I wanted to provide this for you guys. If you guys have any more um, questions, like I said, I will break out the uh, via part of this into its own separate video for those who are only looking for that. But I'd love to hear what you guys think of the end result. Do you think it sounds better, sounds worse? There's you know, more options. Would you like to me to try something different to reach more of a poppy, clacky type sound profile? Um, I'd love to hear your guys' comments and opinions on this. Otherwise, until the next transmission, and maybe I'll come back to this one, keep calm and keyboard on.